today I'll be going through my current makeup collection as of January 2023. The thing to keep in mind is that this is a collection that I have been building for many, many years and I am also super passionate about makeup. I love researching and finding new makeup brands to try out, new products, new companies, the whole thing. I've been very passionate and into makeup for many years, so I think that kind of reflects in my collection, while also keeping in mind that it's not realistic to have an absurd amount of makeup because I actually want to be able to use and enjoy what I have. But with that out of the way, let's get into going through exactly what's in my collection. Everything is kept in these Alex drawers from Ikea, and the main bits are kept in these top three drawers here, and then in this drawer I have lip glosses because they don't fit in the height of the drawer. So we'll start with the one on top. In terms of organization, I keep certain things in these clear acrylic containers that I got from Amazon. I'll try to link them if I can find them, but they're pretty similar to like anything that you can buy on Amazon. And then I group them based off the category of makeup that they are. So back here is like oil control and shine control. This here are primers, concealers, eyebrow products, and then as I kind of went over in my decluttering video, these are products that I need to use or else I'm going to toss them or get rid of them in some way. So they're kind of in like a little reserve here just so I know that I need to like focus at some point on using them and see if I still actually like them. So maybe we'll go through those ones first. And we'll go through what I have here. The first thing I have is the Becca Evermatte Poreless Priming Perfector. This is a couple years old at this point, and I know Becca has since gone out of business slash acquired by Smashbox, so I'm not even sure if they make this product anymore, but I do remember that I really, really liked it. It actually did do a decent job at oil control. You just had to use it in a certain way. You had to apply a pea size amount and then rub it between your fingers, and then it would actually work. So. Like I said, this is on like a reserve to see if I still use it. I just haven't reached for primer too much recently, but I'll see if I end up using it. So it's gonna stick around and it's been part of my collection for quite some while. Next up here, we have the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. This is in the shade 1N. I have had this maybe for a little less than a year at this point. This does pull a little bit too yellow for me, so I am just keeping it on the reserve. I think it's more of a summer color rather than a winter color for me, and I mainly just use it on my under eye area, so we'll be keeping it around again, seeing if I use it. NARS Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. This is a eyeshadow primer, basically, and again, I wanted to look back at how old this is. I can't quite remember when I purchased it and I don't really use eyeshadow primer. I think I'm someone who would probably just use like concealer and powder and that kind of acts as the primer. I don't think it like made eyeshadow worse, <laughs> if, if that makes sense. Next up here we have the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. This thing, she's prehistoric. She's basically a dinosaur. This is from the days of when everybody was setting their makeup and baking their makeup and I gave my best shot at that even though I don't wear foundation so it would just be like baking my concealer which I guess is not that weird but still this has been around for a while and I just really don't use it that much. I wanted to pull it out to see if I will end up using it. And also something, I think it still has like a ton of product left. Just something to keep in mind whether you're buying pressed or loose powders, these things will last forever. Next up we have the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer with SPF 20 and I do believe I have not used this. This is in the shade 1C0 Camo. I bought this because I wanted to try out more coverage at some point. Basically, I only wear concealer. I don't even own any foundation, so I wanted to get something if I wanted a little bit more coverage on certain days, but I just haven't really used this yet, so I wanted to pull it out and make sure I give it a go. That's it for the reserve products. Let's go through the other things that I have. This is like the shine control section, so I keep a good stock of these oil absorbing sheets just target brand because i literally use them every day my skin gets super oily and it just makes sense for me to keep a bunch of these on hand this is the fenty beauty invisimat 
blotting powder in Universal. This just really helps out with shine control and really gives a mattifying look to any oil you might have on your forehead or cheeks. It does a really good job of absorbing that and concealing it. Next up here, the primer bin. This is the Hourglass Mineral Primer Veil, I believe. It's in a nice glass bottle. I actually got this pretty recently and I'm still kind of playing around with it, but I don't really have any complaints about it so far. Smashbox Oil and Shine Control. I have not used this primer yet. Same with the Benefit Pore Professional. This was really popular a couple years ago and I just have not opened it or used it yet. And finally, a travel size of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Dim Light. I did drop it and it broke, but there's still a good amount of powder left. And these take forever to go through. Moving on to the eyebrow container. We have the Refi, I'll put the exact name up on the screen, but the Refi Brow Gel. I love this stuff. I use this basically every day. It has the gel there, and then it also comes very handily with the brush applicator um, to kind of smooth everything out. The Kybrow Eyebrow Gel. This is a product that I've just been trying to use up. Benefit 24 hour brow setter. This product has good hold if you haven't tried it before. I would definitely recommend checking out if you're looking for a product that will kind of freeze your brows in place. This one does a good job for me. NYX's the brow glue. This was kind of influenced by TikTok purchase. I thought the packaging was quite unique. You haven't really seen many brow gels in a package like this. So I kind of liked that. And then I really liked the mini brush applicator as well. Beauty Care Naturals, the brow gel. This is just a clear brow gel. Then I have the Benefit. I'll have to put the exact name on screen, but this is a tinted brow gel, I believe in like a brunette or brown color. I, I also really like the size of this brush. It's really small and precise. Next, we have the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil, and this is in the shade 2.5. This is just a dual-sided brow pencil. Pencil on one side and then the spoolie on the other side. Similar product here, the NYX Micro Brow Pencil. Pencil on one side, and then you got the spoolie on the other side here. And this is in the shade Taupe. Next I have another refi product. They don't put their names on here, so I'll have to look up and put that on screen what this is. This is in the shade Medium, but this is a brow, kind of like a dip brow gel-ish texture, but you've got the brush there and the the pot of product here. Next we have the Anastasia Brow Powder Duo in the shade Taupe. I used to use this a ton, um, but I just kind of stayed away from powder about brow products, but I'm kind of getting into it a little bit more. Sometimes it's just easier to put on like a pencil or a swipe of brow gel, but I kind of do miss this and that's why I'm keeping it in my collection. Finally here with the brow stuff aren't really products but rather tools so I just have a pair of tweezerman, what is this called? Tweezers, a little face shaving razor. I use this for my eyebrows although I know many people use it to also shave and dermaplane their face. These eyebrow scissors, I believe these are from tweezerman as well or maybe, yeah, these are also tweezerman brand and just to kind of clip little bits of the eyebrows that are getting a little too long and then this spoolie that I specifically use for maintaining and like brushing up my eyebrows. Probably one of my favorite makeup categories ever which is concealer. I think it's so necessary for myself and it just makes the world of a difference when applying. So these are the four main concealers that I have other than the Dior Skin Correct. I have the Dior Backstage Flash Perfector Concealer in the shade 2CR. This is great for my under eyes and I've really been enjoying this product as well as its kind of unique um, brush applicator here. It's kind of almost like a concealer brush. Obviously I don't really use it for actually blending the concealer but I kind of like how it's a little different. Then we have the YSL All Hours Concealer. I also really like this concealer for under the eyes. Makeup Forever Ultra HD Concealer. I haven't really played around with this one too much. I just know that it works okay, so not too much to say about that. The YSL Touche Eclat High Cover Concealer. 
I love this stuff. I love layering it with other concealers. This color is a little too dark on me for now, so I think I prefer to use it in the summer, but still really love this stuff. So that is it for everything in this top drawer. Moving on to the second drawer. What you'll find here in this drawer are eyeshadow palettes, more like eye definition products like mascaras and eyeliners, as well as a couple of face products and more eyeshadow stuff and these very special eyeliners. If you saw my makeup decluttering video, I mentioned how I don't want to keep backups of things anymore because things do get discontinued and things go off. And one of the products that I mentioned that I had a bunch of backups of and a couple of them went off was the NYX Matte liquid eyeliner and they actually brought it back um back in stock got these from ulta i actually have not tried them yet i haven't really been wearing eyeliner too much but i'm super excited to try these out again and i might make a video on it might not but super happy these are back in my life i got the black and the white one so i'll take everything else out here and we'll go through them one by one Let's talk about the eyeshadow palettes I have because I don't have a ton. They're kind of curated, but at the same time, there's definitely duplicates. But I'll start with probably my favorite one here. This is the Tartlet in Bloom palette. I've had this for maybe three or four years at this point, and you can see my favorite shade here is Sweetheart. That's the only one that I've hit pan on so far because I don't wear a ton of eyeshadow, but when I do, I definitely reach for this palette. It's a good neutral palette, has a combination of mattes and shimmer shades. I definitely reach for the matte shades more often, but this is just a very good palette overall to me. So since I loved that Tartlet palette so much, the next one I got maybe two years ago, this is probably two years old, is the Tartlet Toasted palette. Um, kind of similar, but just more warmer, more more wintry colors in my opinion. So probably my favorite in here is S'mores and Latte, of course like two natural matte colors, um, but it has a good variety of like warm tone colors in here. Next up for eyeshadows, this is probably my oldest palette. I remember getting this on sale at Ulta maybe like five or six years ago. This is the Lorac Pro. I believe this is the third edition yeah Lorac Pro eyeshadow palette number three I had the number one like many many years ago and I loved that one and I got this to kind of succeed it I guess if you will again good variety of mattes on top shimmers on bottom just an overall well-rounded palette for somebody who enjoys neutral eyeshadow so the final full-size palette that I have is the Anastasia Soft Glam palette here. I had the Modern Renaissance palette before this, so this was um, kind of a successor palette. It's definitely less pinky than that palette. There's only a few like really rosy shades. And I've probably had this maybe for four to three years at this point, and I don't really reach for it as often as I should. I think mainly I use like this noir color and I used to really gravitate towards tempera and burnt orange and sienna, but just haven't really reached for it as much recently. And I think if I were to get rid of a palette, it would be either this one or the Lorac one. This is my collection of full-sized face palettes all right here. So now on to these little mini palettes. I have the Kaja eyeshadow trio in the color 13 velvet dream here this just has three really neutral matte shades it's great for travel and just a good little palette to have and the final eyeshadow palette i have here is the m cosmetics divine skies eyeshadow palette and i think this is the first one that's came out she's since come out with a couple others but this is the one that i have it's like all rosy um, matte, a couple of rosy mattes, and then a few shimmery shades as well. So the other palette that I have in here is the Hourglass. This is the Ambient Lighting Edit. This is the Ghost version. This is one of the limited edition palettes that they release every year. I forget what year this is. Maybe it was 2019 this year. Still have it. Still going strong. I really liked the blush shades in this palette, and I also knew that I liked the Ambient Light dim color here, so... Happy to have another one of that. I, the things I don't really use are the bronzer and this highlighter shade. Really been focused on like this highlighter shade, this blush shade, and 
the dim color. I think I'm just gonna keep this until I use it up though. Moving on to face powders, I have the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish in the shade one. This is a pressed powder and I think it does do a good job of blurring and everything. It is on the pricier side, but it, you do get a decent amount of product and I feel like this will last a while and I pretty much use it every day at this point, if not every other day. And then the other powder I have here is the Laura Mercier. This is the translucent setting powder in the color rose. I know I was just talking about how translucent powders last forever, but I had seen a couple of people using a pinky colored translucent powder to set their under eyes and it kind of like balances out neutral tones but i think i lean more cold toned so i wanted to really try this product i thought it would be something beneficial for me with just setting my under eyes i have found that and i think this might be more of a fault of the concealer that i've been using specifically the dior concealer it does get patchy, and again, I don't think that's the fault of this powder. I think it's more the concealer, but I haven't really noticed that with the Charlotte Tilbury press powder, so I don't know. Maybe it is something with this powder, but still playing around with it, and I like the concept of having a pink to kind of neutralize the darker purples and cooler tones under the eyes. Now let's move into this box of mascaras and eyeliners couple of tools that I'll just get out of the way here. This is an eyelash separator tool for when you have your mascara to kind of stop it from clumping together. You kind of just rake through it. I have a mini size eyelash curler. This is really just to curl like one or two lashes. And then the classic Shiseido eyelash curler here. So the only mascara that I have in this box and pretty much the only mascara that I use is the L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara in the darkest black color. I found that this mascara really lengthens my lashes and also lasts all day. I've never had any problems with flaking or anything, so I just repurchased this one. Um, honestly, I'm not really too troubled to be looking for a new mascara at this point, so really, really like this mascara. Now to quickly just go through the other eyeliners that I have, other than the NYX ones. These are all inferior to that one, I will say. NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in the color Milk. Essence Black Magic Liquid Eyeliner, Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Eyeliner, the NYX Matte Liquid Eyeliner, not to be confused with the Vivid Matte here, the Essence Super Precise Eyeliner, and the NYX Epic Wear Waterproof Eyeliner. That does not look too good. This one is not that old, so that's not good. Not a good sign. But that is it for the second drawer. Let's move on to the third one. So this drawer here contains lip glosses, certain lip products, as well as blush, highlighter, and bronzer. So I'll quickly go through everything that I have here. Second to concealer, my favorite type of makeup product is blush, so that's why I have a lot. I love to try different colors, different tones, so I really enjoy keeping my blush collection ample, if you will, but it's just because it's a passion of mine and might not apply to you. You definitely do not need this many blushes but I've been collecting them over the years and I can confidently say that I use most of them and kind of cycle through them. Starting quickly with this guy here, this is a mini MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus that I dropped and I can't travel with it anymore because it leaks. Um, so I just keep it in here as a reminder to use it and as you can see, it is almost done. I have the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter in a mini size. This is the shade 2 Fair and I basically just use this as a highlighter. I know some people use this as like a skin blurring effect. I just like to use it as a subtle highlighter. I have the Tarte Better Days highlighter. This is another liquid highlighter that I actually got a sample of at first and I really liked it so I went ahead and purchased the full size. I'll kind of rapid fire through the blushes and highlighters and bronzers that I have but if you're interested in any of these in depth I would be happy to make a more in-depth video. So let's go through them real quick. The Clinique Cheek Pop Blush in the shade 18 Pink Honey. The Buxom Wonderlust Primer Infused Blush in the shade Ibiza. Pat McGrath Divine Blush in the color Love Struck. 
the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in the color Diffused Heat Mini Size, the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in the color Luminous Blush Full Size, the Patrick Ta Double Take Cream and Powder Blush in the color She's a Doll, NARS Powder Blush in the color Orgasm Mini Size, Kylie Cosmetics Pressed Powder Blush in the color Winter Kiss, Kylie Cosmetics Pressed Powder Blush in the color We're Going Shopping, the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in the color Grateful. Super pigmented, by the way. The Tarte Amazonian Clay Blush in the color Blushing Bride. Tarte Amazonian Clay Blush in the color Exposed. For highlighters, we have the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed Powder in the color Moonstone. This is the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Blush in the color Girl Next Door and Chic Freak. I actually dropped this um, years ago when I got it, so it never really fully closed all the way, so I'm thinking this might be something I should get rid of because it truly never closes. So I'm a little worried about the life cycle of it at this point. It's a couple, it's, it's kind of old at this point. I believe this is the J-Cat Beauty Glow Girl Baked Highlighter. You Glow Girl Baked Highlighter in the color Moonlight. The Fenty Beauty. Sun Stalker Instant Warm Bronzer in the color Shady Biz, and the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil Light Medium Matte Bronzer. Still smells like chocolate, so still going strong. I'm actually going to put the Fenty Beauty one on the chopping block because I think it is kind of too old at this point. And really quickly going through the lip products here, if you are interested in a more in-depth lip product video with swatches and everything, I can definitely do that. I just think this video is getting a little too long, so I'll just quickly go through them like the blushes. In terms of tools in here, I just have a NYX pencil sharpener in here for any lip liners or anything like that. This is a Giorgio Armani lip product. I'll have to find the exact one and put it on screen, but from what I can tell, it's the color 504. It's like a bright fuchsia raspberry color very pretty i have the buxom full-on plumping lip cream in the color blushing margarita i actually really like this as well as the buxom full-on lip polish in the color emma this is just a shimmery lip gloss basically the kylie cosmetics lip blush in the color i'm blushing very creative the Fenty Beauty lip gloss in the color Diamond Milk. A Clinique Chubby Stick in the color Plushest Punch. A Bite Beauty from before they went vegan. It's kind of thick lip pencil here. And this is in the color Tatin from what I can tell. The Clinique Almost Lipstick in Black Honey. A MAC lip pencil in the color Sore. Definitely need to sharpen that. An unopened NYX lip pencil or lip liner in the color rose, and an opened NYX lip liner in the color red hot that also needs to be sharpened. This is a Tarte lip lingerie. I don't believe they sell these anymore, but this is in the color exposed. Becca glow gloss in the color rose gold. Also RIP to Becca. I really like this, so I wonder if Smashbox sells a formulation of it. So before I put everything back in that drawer, I'm going to pull from our final drawer, which is where the lipsticks are held. So most of the lipsticks and other lip products that I owned are kept on this like standing container. I know I got this from TJ Maxx a couple of years ago. You can find something like this in basically any store that sells like container stuff, but this will be the last thing we go through. Let's go through it. The NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream, and this is in the color London. The M Cosmetics Lip Gloss, I believe this is, or some type of tinted lip gloss in the color Mochi Mochi. I should honestly get rid of this. It doesn't smell. It smells a little off. And then this is the M Cosmetics Lip Gloss in Morning Dew. This is their clear lip gloss, and I really like this. The Charlotte Tilbury Lipstick in the color Love Liberty. 
Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in the color Pillow Talk. Very iconic shade. A MAC lipstick in the color Ruby Woo. Another MAC lipstick in the color Ladybug, which is another red color. And a MAC lipstick in the color Faux. This is the NARS Afterglow Lip Balm in the color Turbo. And another NARS Afterglow Lip Balm in the color Orgasm. A Dior Lip Maximizer Lip Plumper in the shade 007. I'll have to look up what that one is. A Dior Lip Glow Color Reviver Balm in the color 006, which I believe is a berry. And the Dior Lip Glow Oil in the color 001 Pink. The Glossier Lip Gloss. I think I said I was going to get rid of this in my declutter, but I just decided to hold on to it because I do use this one when I wear like a mascara and I want to add gloss to it. This is like the one I'll dip back into and mix the colors, kind of. This is a Givenchy lip gloss in the shade 001. I also have the lip balm, but I guess it's not in my collection right now because I usually wear it out, so it's probably in my bag. But here's the lip gloss, and I also have the lip balm in the same shade. I really like this product. The Sugar Dream Fresh. I believe this is like a tinted lip balm. Not sure of the color. And then finally, another sugar tinted lip balm in the color Berry. And that is it for lip balms and lip glosses <laughs> and everything in between. So while going through this, I identified these two products. I think I actually wouldn't get rid of these. That is everything for my current makeup collection. I feel like this could be a fun thing to do yearly, although I don't anticipate a ton of updates to my collection. I know I will inevitably add some things, maybe get rid of a couple things, so check back in next year to see my 2024 collection, but for now I appreciate you being here, seeing everything that I have, and subscribe for more cleaning and lifestyle videos and I will see you in the next one.